What's up guys? I'm back. This is Ari in the Air. Thanks for being here. You know, maybe you've experienced this before. You're flying along, you're pushing bar, all of a sudden, huge whack. As it reinflates, it just goes flunk. Wingtip is stuck in. You've got a cravat. First thing you do, obviously, is you say, F But what's the second thing you do? I think there's a lot of misinformation around this topic. I had a friend yesterday on a big cross country flight take a whack, get a cravat, and it took him a thousand feet to sort it out. So today I wanna to tell you how I deal with a cravat, how I think about it, and hopefully it's helpful for you. You ready? Here we go. Yeah. Okay, hey guys, yeah, I am back. I am alive. I was off in Utah making a TV show and on a big sabbatical, been flying a lot, so I've got a lot of things to tell you. Today I wanna to talk about cravats because I think this is a very misunderstood concept. Some people don't know what a stabilo line is. Some people think that the stabilo is the only way to clear a cravat. Some people aren't sure what a cravat really is. So today we're gonna to talk about all of that. Okay, first of all, what's a cravat? A cravat is when your wing gets stuck in itself for whatever reason. Typically in cross country flying, this is because you've taken a collapse and the wing hasn't opened cleanly and it's stuck in its own lines. A lot of people think that the first thing you wanna do is pick the stabilo line out. The stabilo line is the one that goes to the very wing tip. It's usually a different color so that you can identify it so you can pull on it. A stabilo is a way to clear a cravat, but I don't think it's the first way to clear, clear a cravat and I'll explain to you why. The problem with fixating on the stabilo is that usually if you have a cravat, it means that there is a line group, your outside A's, B's, C's, and the stabilo that are now not under tension. And so those lines are gonna group together and they're gonna be like kind of tangled or at least messy near your riser. So you're gonna have to like, kind of like look at them, fixate on them and find it, pick it out, which it's really like, you have to let go of the brake. You have to look here when that side of the wing is collapsed, if you look over here or you're looking up at the wing tip, you're gonna just put your weight onto it, you're gonna lean over onto it and you're gonna start the auto rotation, which is exactly what we want to avoid. So in general, I think that Stabilo is a great option, but not the first option. So I wanna tell you how I think about clearing a cravat for myself. So the first thing that you wanna do if you take this cravat if you take this collapse that turns into a cravat, the first thing you wanna do, take a deep breath. You need to like not panic, right? Panicking is gonna just make the whole thing worse. Before you even assess the thing, you need to get your heading under control. If you take a huge whack and it turns into a cravat and the glider dives, you're gonna really need to quickly get heading control. That means you're gonna weight shift the opposite side and pull the right amount of brake that is gonna give you heading control once again. Um, there's some funny things that happen when you have a big cravat. A big cravat is gonna be messy and it's like a big break. And so it's gonna make your airspeed really slow. So it means that if you weight shift the far side and you part, pull in a bunch of brake to get heading control, you can pretty easily stall the glider. Well, if you're good at stalls, it's not a huge problem and that's probably what might be a perfect solution to your, to your issue. But um, in the meantime, before you're at that level, you wanna be careful not to stall the glider accidentally. So if you take this cravat, you want to get on the good side, fly yourself away from terrain, make sure you have clearance before you even look up at the thing. In a previous video, one of Mexico's most legendary instructors, Luis Yepes, he recommends that if you take a collapse, the first thing you do is you look at the horizon and you sit in your harness straight up and you just take a moment. 
We typically, when scary things happen in our gliders, we tend to react quickly and it can lead to overreaction. We don't wanna overreact here. We wanna have the right input at the right time to solve the malfunction as quickly as possible. So, first thing that we do is get heading control. Fly away from the train. Once we have clearance, then I would say that we need to do some kind of assessment. There's a lot of different ways that your glider can cravat. Some of them are gonna clear easier than others. And some of them are gonna clear with certain techniques and not others. So the most common type of cravat is where you take it asymmetric or even a full frontal, and then as it reopens, it opens with its wingtip in front of the A-lines, okay? This is the most common type of cravat, and luckily it's, I would say, the easiest to clear. The reason that it's easiest to clear is because since the glider is in front of the lines, all you need to do is make the glider go backwards momentarily so that it will clear the stuck part of the wing and then the glider can fly forward normally again. The first thing that I do in this situation is I'm gonna pull on the brake really sharp, really fast, really hard. I'm gonna ring the bell and that's gonna look like past my seat board and it's gonna be really quick and momentary. I'm not gonna hold it down, I'm just gonna ring the bell. What this does is this gonna radically decrease the volume of the glider, increase the pressure. Hopefully that will just blow the cravat right out. This should be your first thing that you try to do, okay? Because first of all, the brake is already in your hands. You don't have to let go of anything. You don't really even have to look at it. All you have to do is pull the brake down really hard. That is gonna clear 70% of cravats, honestly. The next thing for me personally, and I don't wanna tell you how to do this, I don't want to set you up. If you're not, if you haven't done SIV, if you haven't practiced spins and stalls, then hopefully this video is just a illumination as to where you are. If you're out flying cross country in big thermic conditions and you haven't done spins and stalls, you're really asking for it. Because if you haven't practiced this kind of thing and you take even a minor cravat and you don't know how to deal with it, you're setting yourself up for an accident, I would say. So practicing spins and stalls is important uh, for exactly this reason. So the thing that I will do to clear a cravat, especially if the wingtip is in front of the A-lines, is fly the glider backwards. How I'm gonna do that 90% of the time is just a spin. A spin is an asymmetric stall. You're just gonna stall one side of the glider and I'm gonna do what we call a spin stop. So I'll only spin the glider 45 degrees. If you go to an SIV, you'll have your SIV instructor. He'll tell you to bury the brake and hold it there and the glider will totally continue rotating for 360 or 540 or something. That's what we refer to as a fully developed spin. You don't need to fully develop a spin to clear a cravat. You basically just need to make it go backwards long enough that the, that the air goes through the lines backwards it pushes the wingtip away from the lines, you let it fly again, and it's gonna clear. It might not clear completely on that little tiny spin, but then you can usually pump it out. Spinning the glider is the fastest, easiest way to clear a cravat. And a spin stop, a 45 degree spin, is really super benign, and it's something that you should practice over the water with an instructor. It's something you should really have under your belt if you're out flying in thermic cross-country conditions. If you have a really big cravat, say like the one that I had in the streamer incident, that video that you've watched, I'm sure, I had the right wing tip in the left A-line. So I had something like a 50% cravat or a 60% cravat. In this configuration, to make the glider fly straight, I have to weight shift so far over and pull enough brake that the glider is like right on stall. It's like gonna stall if I pull any brake at all. And so at that point, I knew that I just needed to stall the glider and fly it backwards for a moment and let it shoot and it'll come out. So uh, to, to start listing this out, I think about the first thing to deal with a cravat is I have heading control. The second thing, 
I do is I clear terrain. That's still kind of the first one, heading control and terrain clearance. The second one is an assessment of like, how exactly is that stuck in there? If it's a normal cravat where the glider is in front of the lines, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just a sharp tug on the brake. The second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that again, but I'm gonna do it hard enough, sharp enough, and far enough to spin the glider. The third thing that I'll do is I will stall the glider. I really like to stall and I've done hundreds, if not a thousand or more stalls. So I'll probably stall the glider. But at this point, before you stall, if you have heading control and you have clearance, now's the time that you might want to go for the Stabilo. Remember, we didn't go for the Stabilo first thing because the Stabilo means that we have to look at the wingtip we have to reach over towards it, which puts our weight on the inside, which is how the auto rotation starts. And we really don't want to let this thing start spiraling. So I would prefer to stall the glider rather than reach and fits with the Stabilo. But if you have a cravat, one time I was flying cross country and I took this huge frontal on full speed bar on an ENC. And as it reinflated, it, kind of stuck like horizontally out. And so the wingtip wasn't in front of the lines. So at that point, I wasn't certain that like stalling it and flying it backwards would actually clear it. And that was an instance where I went for the Stabilo. If the wingtip is kind of like in itself in a weird way, or if it's stuck down in the lines and has kind of a vertical component to it, usually a cravat will kind of stay up at the top of the cascades. But if it's kind of come down, this might be an instance where pulling on the Stabilo is the best option. And so once you have heading control and once you have terrain clearance, then you can reach for the Stabilo. Sometimes the Stabilo is not very easy to grab because like I mentioned before, it can be messy in the risers because the whole wingtip is kind of slack. And so all of the lines will be lumped together. You should um, accustom yourself to the glider that you're flying so that you know which line is the is the Stabilo. What color is it? Is it on a separate little A-riser? Usually it has a different color. So at that point you can fish it out. The thing with the Stabilo that you might not expect is how much you actually have to pull in on the thing. This is another reason why the Stabilo is not a great first option is because if the wingtip is curled down, say it's curled down a meter, right? Your lines are 10 meters long. So it's 10% down towards you. That means that you're gonna to have to reach a meter up the Stabilo line to even, and pull it down a meter to even get tension on the, on the wingtip, which means that now you're gonna to have to hold tension on the Stabilo, take your hand up the Stabilo once again and pull another meter. Okay, so how are you gonna hold that tension? Are you gonna let go of your other brake to grab the Stabilo? Are you gonna put the Stabilo in your mouth? These are all things that like make the Stabilo not the best option for a cravat, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So thinking about how you might pull in two meters, three meters of the Stabilo in worst case scenario, you know, it's gonna take some reeling in on this damn thing. So in the past, I have used my mouth. Yes, I've pulled it down, I've vied on the line, I pulled up, I grabbed it, it cleared, I let it go and it pops out. Fair enough, I'm not, I definitely don't tell your dentist you do that and don't do that on my recommendation. But thinking about if the wingtip is pulled down towards you, how you're gonna pull the slack in, how you're gonna progress capture, how you're gonna pull more slack, it's really not that great of a situation. There's one more technique that I've seen in real life but I've never done myself, and that is to take an asymmetric collapse again on the side that the cravat is on in hopes that the glider will clear itself. So imagine, you're flying, you take a collapse, it's got a cravat. You pump the brake, it doesn't come out. You don't wanna spin the glider, you don't wanna stall the glider, fair enough. The Stabilo won't do it, okay. The next thing that I've seen is people will take the entire A riser that's on the cravatted side and they'll pull it into a frontal. That makes the entire side collapse and the hope is that during the collapse or in the reinflation, the wingtip will clear itself and the, the cravat will be cleared. I think this is a great option. Um, slacking the entire wing and then hoping it will come out again is a good option. If you're not comfortable pulling asymmetric 
um, frontals. You probably shouldn't be flying in big thermic cross-country conditions that would give you a cravat in the first place. So, hmm, yeah, cravats. So just to recap, you say fuck or motherfuck or something of the like. Second thing, you take a deep breath. Third thing, you get heading control. Fourth thing, you get terrain clearance. Fifth thing, you pull hard on the brake. Sixth thing, you spin the glider. Seventh thing, you stall the glider. Eighth thing, you tug on the stabilo and reel it in like some kind of sailor. Ninth thing, maybe you pull up asymmetric collapse. Tenth thing, throw your fucking reserve. <laughs> it's always a good option. <laughs> um, best case scenario is you just learn to keep your glider open so you don't have a lot of cravats. Cravats are fairly rare. I've only had a couple of them in my flying career. I've had a couple on my acro glider when I was doing asymmetric sats. And I've had a couple on ENCs taking gigantic wax at full speed. Uh, yesterday, my friend had one on a two-liner, and he really was just trying to fit with the riser and find the stabilo instead of just pulling on the brake. So your best bet, pull on the freaking brake, practice your spins, practice your stalls. These are all the prerequisites and those asymmetric collapses. These are all prerequisites to flying in conditions that would give you a collapse that would lead to a cravat. So I hope this video helps. I hope it helps understand what the progression might be to flying in these conditions or the things that you might want to practice so that you can deal with it if that time comes, because it likely will. If you fly enough hours in cross-country conditions, you're going to take a collapse that's not going to come out clean. It's not the end of the world. The glider will likely fly straight and true with a cravat. It's not that big of a deal. Take a deep breath. You can deal with this. If you like these videos, consider subscribing. If these help you and you want to support my channel, consider donating at paypal.me slash airy in the air. I really appreciate all the people who have donated. I'm back. I've got lots of videos coming. You guys stay tuned. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Fly safe out there.